You know, in the 10 years that I have lived in Newport, I've come to appreciate so much about Rhode Island and especially about Newport. Not only its beauty, which is incredible to me, its people whom I've come to love and cherish, but also its history. Um, when I think back on um, the founding of Rhode Island and the founding of Newport, the notion of religious liberty stands out for me. The people who escaped Massachusetts to come down to be able to worship as they pleased. Um, Roger Williams, what he did. John Clark, what he did persistently to get the charter to bring it to Newport. I've also been very interested in the Washington Letter, which is celebrated every year at Toro Synagogue, and I did some study about that. That letter, which actually the phrasing of it began with um, satius. But what Washington said was so important, and that was that this government, the new government of the United States, would give bigotry no sanction and persecution no assistance. That letter spoke of toleration. And the more I thought about toleration, the more I thought, hmm, it's necessary but not sufficient. To tolerate somebody is to say, I won't interfere with you. You can be here, I will be here. I think we need more than toleration. I think what we need is to go out to the other, to understand the other. And paradoxically, I think what happens is the more rooted we are authentically in faith, the more able we are to go out to the other. And that's what I think religious liberty is about. In the time in which we live, which I think is more tribalist and more divisive than any in which I have lived, I can't tell you how much I believe we need this notion of religious liberty that says, I will go out to you, I will love you, not in spite of my faith, but because of my faith. I think that's really um, the essence of it, that we need to be rooted in order to be open. And this is something that I think we absolutely need to celebrate. But when I say celebrate, it's not celebrate the past. It's make meaningful what happened in the past that was so good. And in this case, it's the celebration of religious liberty here and now, in this place. I think this is something that Newport has to do, that Rhode Island has to do, and it has to be something that they can show the nation. This is what we stand for. This is what our history is, and it's what our present reality is. It's hospitality in a way. It says, come in, those of you who are different from me. I will not only respect you, I will, under, I will make every attempt to understand you. And when I look back at the really difficult things in our history, what I see are people who stood together, people of very different faiths. I look at Martin Luther King, who stood with Abraham Heschel. And there's a great quote from Abraham Heschel where he says, um, on the march, even my feet were praying. King was a Baptist, Heschel was a Jew. Together, they found common cause. They respected each other in their faith, but they were also open to the other. I look at the Dalai Lama, um, who remained a Buddhist, but was open to all religions of the world, even I think our Catholic mystic of this time, Thomas Merton, toward the end of his life, he loved Eastern religion. It enriched him. It enriched his own faith. This is what I think our society has to be. And it's based on love, not fear. That is what I, need, I think we need to celebrate when we say religious freedom here in Rhode Island but also here in Newport. You know, a favorite quote of Mother Teresa's of mine is, what's wrong with the world is that we have forgotten that we belong to each other. 
I think Rhode Island and Newport can celebrate that notion, make meaningful that notion, that we belong to each other, and the religious freedom that exists here is not something that is just part of the past. We have to work at it. We have to raise it up. We have to let people know that it is meaningful, not back in the 17th century, but here in the 21st century. I think it's critical that we do this. And I celebrate all the work that is going on to look at what's happening with the spring, the center of Newport, and have it be more than a place, water that was found, but also a spirit, a spirit that uh, pervades not only our beautiful city and our beautiful state, but that goes out from that and becomes a symbol to the United States and I hope to the world. I congratulate you for coming here to think about it, to think about how we might celebrate it, how we might make it meaningful, and how we might be grateful every day for this city and this state that we live in.